luxury bags, the Dior saddle bag in the 2018 navy oblique Dior monogram print with the Christian Dior tape running across the center. And tonight we're going to be reviewing this bag. So this bag first came to me about eight months ago. I was very new into my luxury journey and I really was not sure that I was going to like this bag. I had seen people compare it to an errant kidney or a bean or say that it just looked out of place as a handbag. And I don't know, at the beginning of my collection, I wasn't sure that I would have a need for this bag. So I was a little bit hesitant in getting it. But I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And then someone in one of the communities that I'm in posted one of these for sale in our buy sell trade group. And again, I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and eventually decided what could it hurt to make an offer. And I did, and it was accepted. And a couple days later, this baby came to me courtesy of USPS. And from the second I opened the bag, I was just hooked on this thing. If you can't already tell, I love her and have worn her half to death. <laughs> we'll go over some of the wear and tear in this video. But I really think it's a shockingly practical bag, especially if you only know you're, if you know you're only going to be out of the house for maybe a couple hours, uh, or you know exactly what you need to bring with you. This is not a, an everything can fit sort of bag. It's not a Louis Vuitton on the go or a Neverfull. You have to be quite strategic with what you put in here, but I find that that's not usually a problem for me. I also tend to overpack bags, small bags and large bags alike, so I find I can fit a surprising amount in this. So this thing comes with me almost everywhere. Quick trip to the coffee shop, I need to go pick up paper towels from the grocery store, uh, I need to run downtown to run an errand. This thing is just my chuck everything in and go type of bag. It really lends this sort of model off-duty type of vibe to it. It has that little bit of daring that can just sort of spice up a very neutral outfit. And the blue is very subtle as a color with this navy and this sort of lighter, lighter blue that sort of traces throughout the oblique print. You can see it here on the D in Dior. Um, and so I really just think it is quintessential. I love it so much. Uh, it has only furthered my love of the House of Dior, but as usual, this is a high quality replica, uh, but I have found it to be nearly identical to the ones that I have seen sort of out in the wild. But we will get into, like I said, the wear and tear and what fits tonight. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. So, the first thing to know about this bag is actually the closure. So this bag has two magnets that keep this flap of the saddle bag in place. The first is right here, under the lower left-hand portion of the flap. You can sort of see it falling into place there, snapping into place. This one's quite soft. It's definitely not a very firm or overly aggressive magnet, and I do find it keeps the bag in place, but that may also be due to the structure and construction of the bag. The second stronger magnet is right here. You can sort of see it when I squeeze the strap like that. And it connects to a magnet that is in between the D in Dior and the N in Christian, right here on this tape. You can see even just from the sound, that that is a little bit of a stronger magnet. And this is the main closure of the bag. So to open it, you just lift it by this strap. This 
leather strap with the large signature D for Dior at the end in this lovely brushed gold color. Brushed gold is the color of all the hardware throughout this bag. Is non-functional. It is purely decorative just to complement the other strap and it hangs down. Sadly, it makes quite a little bit of non-desirable noise when I move the bag a little bit, so I'm going to be very careful that it stays in the same position and it doesn't sound too grating. First, some even more lovely fabric sounds. This is a very heavy canvas for a bag. You can see that it's double-sided in there. I'm going to tilt the bag up for a little bit so you can take a look inside. And we can see our first item falling out. I'll set that aside. Here you can see this sort of oval opening of the bag. It's actually quite similar to the way the Dior Bobby bag opens. And like I said, you can see that it is a heavy canvas and the inside is lined with a much thinner canvas or muslin fabric. The bag has a small zip pocket right at the back. And you can see, and you can see that the zip pull has CD for Christian Dior stamped onto it. So, so the first thing that fits is obviously my phone. Now, this is my old phone that I just use as a prop in these videos. This is the old iPhone 7 in just a glitter case I got on Amazon. But this is roughly the same size as my current iPhone 11 Pro. So I use it in these videos just as a stand-in, just to give you guys a sense of what fits. All right, let's see what we have next. All right. So this is my sunglasses case. As someone who has chronic shoulder pain, I definitely prefer to minimize what I carry in my bags so that I'm not putting undue stress on either of my shoulders. So to that end, I really do prefer small bags, and so I always try to use a soft sunglasses case like this one wherever possible, because it means that's not one more bulky, large item I have to fight with when I'm packing my bag. So I'm going to use the little toggle and open up the drawstring. And we can see that inside we have these 90s inspired sunglasses. These are from Zenny Optical. You can hopefully see that very faded on the inside of the arm of the glasses. Zenny is a great place for affordable eyewear, so if you guys are in the market, I definitely do recommend them. But you'll have to know a lot of your own measurements and prescription yourself, so do be aware. Also within this soft cloth case, I have a polishing cloth that came with the glasses. Very useful to have this. And then next we have, this is my favorite hand sanitizer of the moment. This is the Touchland, Touchland Power Mist Hydrating Hand Sanitizer in the one fluid ounce or 30 milliliter size. I didn't buy this purely for the sound it makes, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't hurt. <laughs> see the ingredients on the back. What I like about this is the size and the shape. It's very compact and it's very easy to sort of slip into an already packed bag. I also love this little spray. What you do is you spray the hand sanitizer. And 
then rub your hands together to distribute it. I definitely think this is one of the most practical things that I keep in my bag. Uh, definitely find a lot of use for it as a user of public transportation. And I will say the scent on this is quite nice. It doesn't say it here, but it is aloe scented, and you can pick this up at your local Sephora. Okay, that's a couple of our biggest items out of the way. Let's see what's next. This will be familiar to any of you who watched my What's in My Chanel bag video. So this is my ID sleeve. This has my Metro card. Pass to a local museum. And my apartment keys, all in one convenient place. I typically will also keep a debit and credit card in here, as well as my government-issued ID. That way it's very easy to just have everything I need all in one place. To be honest, I'm a little bit resistant to trying another keep-all or catch-all, like something like the Louis Vuitton Recto Verso, for example, just because I'm not really sure it would offer me the versatility that something like this does. But if you guys have a, whether it's a luxury SLG or a high street one, or even something you can just buy at the dollar store that you really use uh, and you like to use to keep your keys and your cards organized together, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Always willing to try stuff out. We have one of my favorite lip glosses at the moment. This is a Milani Diamond Gloss. And this is a... This is a clear gloss with iridescent gold flecks in it. I'll swatch it for you. very moisturizing, and it does not contain a synthesized form of vitamin E called tocopherol that is present in a lot of commercially available lip products that I actually have a topical allergy to. So I am very, very picky about the lip products I use, and this one is definitely a winner. Definitely check it out if you're able to. we can see my continued penchant for lip balms. These are two of the Smith's Tropical Ambrosia Balm in coconut and mango flavor. Promise I did not plan to have two of these in here. <laughs> this bag is still packed from when I went out this morning to go grab some coffee. I must have placed my spare in here along with my default sort of bag chapstick without realizing it. This is not an item, this is part of the bag, but I did want to have us take a look at it. So this is the date code of the bag. This is formatted in such a way that you can verify when it was made, what batch, uh, for authentication purposes. Obviously being a replica, that's not something I have a huge interest in, but for those of you who are looking to buy the authentic version of this bag, that is an important thing to be aware of. 
And there are tons of videos online about how to decipher the Dior date codes and make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Now, like I mentioned, we're going on to this zip pocket at the back of the pack. Like I said, you can see the CD stamped there onto the zipper pull. The zipper pull itself is leather. In front of the pocket, we can see this Christian Dior Paris, made in Italy, in gold foil, hot stamped onto another date code on the back, and this tag, and the opening of the zip pocket is also leather lined in that same black leather. Now, this zip pocket is actually quite small, but I do use it for a variety of things. The first is just some cash. city, you never know where you're going to go, uh, where they might only accept cash, or when you might see someone in need, so I try to always have some cash on me for those purposes. And this little very slim pocket at the back is great for that. Next up, we have a little hot sauce packet. I always try to grab a couple of these whenever I go to that coffee shop and get a breakfast sandwich. I am an absolute spice lover. I hate when something does not have enough flavor or enough heat to it. I say as I am an absolute baby compared to a lot of ethnicities around the world when it comes to spice. But I really do like having hot sauce readily available to me so I can adjust uh, the flavor or the spiciness of something on the go. And these little packets are great for that. Of course, I try not to carry them when it's too hot out because I'm paranoid about them popping inside my bag. I'm not even sure if that's possible, but I'm paranoid about it, so anyway. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about the sound that these make, but it's so satisfying. Okay, do we have anything else? Another hot sauce packet. Didn't realize I grabbed two today. And then, I think lastly, we have a mask. This is a plain black non-surgical mask. I try to always have one on me, even though I am not directly at risk for COVID-19 or other seasonal illnesses. It's always nice that if I'm going into a crowded place or I'm going to see someone who might have been possibly exposed recently, to have one just in case. Okay, so that's everything that fits in the bag. Like I said, I really find this to be shockingly practical for me. It's really nice just to be able to have and to use, to be able, like I said, to just sort of chuck all my stuff in it and run out the door. And it really does elevate something as simple as an oversized uh, button-down shirt, a tank top, some shorts, and a pair of sneakers really sort of gives you that almost uh, Pinterest fashion girl type of look, if I had to describe it. But taking, like I said, a look at the bag itself, we can see that we have, in addition to the D on the strap here that we mentioned earlier, we also have this central tape that runs across the center of the bag. First, in this sort of staticky, randomized cream and blue, and then this solid blue with the cream 
Christian Dior embroidered on top and then it says Paris in small letters underneath and then again a band of that sort of staticky white or sorry cream and navy there's also this little embroidered line down in the lower left that helps to emphasize the saddle-like shape. The bag is also divided into two sections at the bottom, almost like an accordion or a pochette style bag. And you can see that the oblique jacquard fabric continues there as well. sides, the straps attach by these folded over and very heavily embroidered for stability loops that attach onto hardware that says CD, CD for Christian Dior. They are attached with this little loop and another fabric loop at the top completes the cloth strap of the bag. This is definitely one of the places where you can start to see wear on my bag. You can see that it is really prone to pilling, which is a problem I've noticed throughout this bag. For me, it's not that big of an issue. No one is really inspecting my bags up close, but it is very annoying considering with the construction of this bag, how often, if it's worn as intended, aka as a shoulder bag, the fabric is going to be sort of rubbing up against you or your clothes, meaning that, I don't know, I just feel that Dior should have considered a way to sort of prevent this, because it does seem to be a flaw in both authentic and replica bags. I do try to depill this as much as possible, but it's quite difficult, so at this point I'm somewhat resigned to it being what it is. You can see here what the sort of unworn fabric looks like. And then over the top, you can see just how much sort of pilling and wear there has been to the fabric. Here, along the side of the saddle flap, you can see the threads that are starting to come loose. I do trim them about once a month, but they don't seem to be getting any better. You can also begin to see some loose threads on the side here. As well as along the front of the bag and the sides. Really here, along the tape on the back, at the front of this very nice, very generous sized pocket, I do tend to keep my phone in here, as you can see, it fits quite nicely because of the way this is structured. You can see all of this pilling that occurs because the top fibers of the bag are constantly getting rubbed as it's worn on the shoulder and is pressed close to the body. I think that is a major advantage in the leather version of this bag, is that you don't have to worry about that similar wear quite as early on. And again here you can start to see some of those loose threads. Overall, I do really like this bag, but I am planning to have to replace it in the next two years, which is Overall, I do really enjoy this bag, but I am planning on having to replace it within the next two years, which is a little bit disappointing. So I would definitely say keep an eye out for wear on any pre-owned items you might buy, and Keep an eye out for wear on any versions of this bag that you may get. I find that it's definitely worth, if you are someone who's clumsy, using a sort of spray protectant on bags like this, on bags that are made of cloth or canvas, um, just to protect them from any sort of spills. I don't believe it will really do anything to help prevent fabric wear like this, 
but it is just a nice piece of insurance. All right, let's repack this back. You can see that packing the last couple items, I do have to shift things around a little bit in order to get them to fit, which is normal for this bag, but is definitely something to be aware of because I know not everybody likes that. This definitely is not a bag that you can fit something like that inside, so if that helps to give you guys a better sense of scale. Um, like I said, this bag is quite, uh, I wouldn't say small in terms of how it looks on the body, but small in terms of what it can fit, if that makes sense. It is 25 and a half centimeters across, um, and I would say it's about 15 to 18 in total height from here here on the bag. I actually don't know uh, what the strap drop is on this bag. Uh, I believe measurements are available on Dior's website if you are interested, uh, but overall it fits very comfortably on the shoulder. I do know that a lot of people will attach other straps, longer straps, in order to cross body or just have a longer shoulder strap by clipping the Dior separately sold straps onto the opening of the D at each side of the bag. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that look. I think that the top strap hangs a bit awkwardly when that happens. Um, I think it looks great on other people, I just can't seem to make it uh, work for myself. Um, plus, I really like the way this looks as a shoulder bag or even just top handle carried. Um, I think it looks really elegant and really chic. Um, it's definitely not a classic bag by any means. You know, if you're sort of debating if this is for you or if you, you know, don't think that you would really wear it if you really only stick to the classics, you know, if you're a hardcore, you know, Hermes Kelly and, you know, Chanel classic flap type of person, <laughs> this may not be for you. But if you want something that's a fun pop of color in your wardrobe, I would really recommend checking this out because this can just add so much visual interest to an outfit. It's really fun. I think it's very um, playful while still being cool, if that makes sense. Definitely get very, like I said, model off duty, cool girl type of vibes. So if that's the person you are or want to be, I would definitely recommend uh, checking out this dynamite little bag. It really is just an absolute trooper. You can <laughs> use it and abuse it and it will kind of just take it and keep coming back for more. So, like I said, highly recommended. Definitely go check this out. Um, but definitely, if you're able, try it on in store or try on a friend's before you commit to purchasing one. I also think that this bag holds uh, a very good amount and I really like that about it. Uh, I would say that overall I really like it and it's a staple in my wardrobe. So thank you guys for spending this time with me and I hope that I'll see you soon. Goodbye and good night. Goodbye and good night.